What's going on guys? So today on this Shoki review we're going to take a look at the Helmwage Rain Car. Or Helm Vigo Rain Car. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, they gave it a nice German name, but it is the big blue bowl looking thing from IBO Season 2, piloted by this dude over here. And uh, yeah, it's the one with the big sword, in case you forgot. Nobody forgot. But uh, apparently the producers forgot that the suit could be anything good because it didn't get enough screen time. Okay, rant over. So, uh, what we got here is some really nice artwork. It looks like it is actually the little fight in the canyon. We've got beam, beam blast sorry, going on in the background, although I don't know why there's multiple when there was only a single thing that could emit beam weapons. I also got a great shot of the Helmvig here. Very nice and blue and yellow and big old swordy sword right here. Looks really good. You got the IBO logo right there. HG Iron Bottle Orphans. 144 Helmvig Rank Car. 2017 Bandai. All the little things down there at the bottom. Bandai logo down here. Now we come to the bottom of the box. You got the obligatory rear and front shot. And you've got to read up there the Valkyria. The, the Valkyria. Valkyria. We'll call it the Valkyrie. Buster Sword is a large weapon longer than the height of the machine body with a retractable handle that can also be stored. I didn't say also. And then it says you can store a sword on the thing. Hey, look, it's got a big sword. And, yeah, that literally is a thing on every box. Enjoy creating impressive poses by using its whole body structure. It always says that. And sword can be divided into two weapons. Literally everything on here is about a sword. Electric shock horns. Things it can't do. Well, rather, it did not do. Choose how you want to extend the ankle part. Yay. And, of course, come over to this side. You got IBO Banner, HG Iron Blooded Orphans, number 31 in the line. A repeat of the box art. Very good looking kit there. And Bandai Hobby on that. And you come over here and you got customize. Didn't really customize. You're just sort of fighting the big dude right there. <laughs> Looks pretty cool. Cont package contains this one thing. Yeah. Recreate your exciting combat scenes in your display. As well, you should. Uh, I do, of course, have this kit. I either might do it next or after. I'm not entirely certain which way I want to do it, but of course it shows you. You can have these thingies here. Come over here, and you got a three-year-old. Do not stick. Wow. Do not stick a blue bull in your three-year-old's face. It will hurt. And way over here, you got to look up to 1,200 yen, because nice, affordable, cheap IBO kit. And illustration is by Koma. French works is by Saito Yoshinobu. And the big blue bull is still upside down. I know. Every time. Can't can't avoid it. Alright, um, build montage will either be short or non-existent on this one, as I built a third of this thing on a live stream and did not actually do the build montage. So if there isn't one, I'm sorry. If there is one, I'm also sorry, because it's going to be short. <laughs> but let's get to it one way or the other.
All right, now with that done here, we have the Helmweg already done and looking really big and bulky and like a football player kind of <laughs> from the future. Got the huge shoulder pads going on here. Of course, you have the obligatory horns coming off the head. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but it has a rather small, dinky weapon. I know it's it's kind of hard to see. Um, I, I don't even know why it bothers. I mean, it, it can't possibly be useful with how small it is. Uh, yeah, it's just it's it's embarrassing how little weaponry comes with this thing, or rather, how little weaponry that comes with it is. So yeah. <laughs> it's a huge friggin' sword. I mean, seriously, ginormous sword. So, uh, just real quick, I'm gonna take it apart. Hopefully, it'll work. Because we're gonna have to take a look at accessories, but I gotta get it out of his hand first. Epic poses are important too. Just so you know, the sword tends to keep the balance. As was expertly shown off there by the fact that it fell over the second the sword was removed from his hand. Uh jeez. There we go. Let's just. Are you gonna stand? Are you gonna stand on your own? You guys, I've already seen one small problem with this kit. There, it'll it'll stand like that. All right. So, just real quick, we'll take a look at his ginormous. Valkyrie Buster Sword, or Valkyrie, it's Valkyrie. So yeah, it's a ginormous bladed thing. So you have the really big blade here, and I did actually do the nice painting thing that I did with it. So I had to mask off all those edges and gave it a quick spray job. As you can see, like right here, the tape got a little bit rough, but hey, it's not too bad. Same thing on that side, just a couple small issues here and there. But I also gave it some of my favorite dark gray ever in the little bolt holes. And then right here in the groove, right down the middle. It's not exactly a fuller, but I guess it sort of fills in the same gap as a fuller. No pun intended. And then I gave it some more gray right down here around this area. And right through there. Now this thing does, of course, extend. A little bit stiff. So you got a nice dual-wieldy ability on the hammer there. Hammer. I always want to call it a hammer because this looks like a hammer. But they did give you a nice cool illusion that it's one long handle, and in fact it's actually two. Because you can, with a fair bit of struggle, ugh, separate them. So you can have just the straight up, like, sword part, and you got a nice big guard right there. And you have basically a club, or a bat. Very reminiscent of the Roy's, actually, I would think. But, you know, got like some blades going on there. But it's pretty cool. I like the fact that you can separate the actual weapon. Now, one thing that doesn't make sense for this, this, I guess, is more or less a big, open, just gaping hole. This side looks like it should attach to something, but it doesn't, at least not on this kit. So maybe there is one out there that it was always meant to work with or something like that. But you can collapse the handle on this guy. Same thing on this one, but I think if I collapse that, I might not get it back, so I'm not going to. But you can hold the weapons individually in his hands. If you really want to, I'm going to take the shortcut and pull the hand off. Now, one cool thing, because this isn't standard IBO hands, these are actually bigger, you do, in fact, get a little bitty tab right inside. And as you can see, the sword handle right there actually has that nice big groove. You can use that to your advantage. And he can hold it, and it will not rotate or anything like that. Now, I want to show off, it also has this handle kind of on the guard that you can also hold it like so giving it kind of the suitcase motif here and I'm just gonna carry my sword around like this no big deal do, 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 do. and yeah he does want to fall backwards so maybe I need to squat him forward just a little bit yep still gonna fall all right, and of course, he can hold the bat section, or club section. And he could also come into battle and be like, welcome to the club, and then smash somebody in the head. Unfortunately, Surugi never did anything like that. He's very, very kind of formal. 
So he didn't really ever walk in with any good puns or anything like that into battle. But this looks pretty good in and of itself. So if you really want your Helmvig to have two weapons, you can do it this way. Or you can go for broke. And you can combine them back. Now this is something that uh, one of my new subscribers definitely told me about. Uh, so you've got to insert the handle here into this little block right through the center bit. Now when you first try it, of course you want to make sure this is facing forward. It, it's going to get hung up a little bit. So you think, okay, that's perfectly fine. Oh, actually, now that I look at it, that is perfectly fine. So, but it's going to take some force to get that handle all the way in. It, it will get hung up right here in the middle. You've really got to get it to push all the way through or else it'll start getting really wiggly, waggly, and nobody wants that. So he does have a very compact mode like so, although the only reason for that is so he can hold it like the suitcase mode. Like so. Now one of his other accessories applies to the sword in its compact mode. And it is this crotch extension. <laughs> and there's literally no real better word for that. And all I did was just add a little bit of paint right there. A little chrome, a little gray for a little piston guy. And what you need to do here is grab the entire front crotch skirt. Give it a good wiggle because it's, it's going to be on there pretty good. You want to take this, plug it in right there where the old skirt was plugged in, and now you have a very um, awkward thing happening. Plug this in like it's the same thing, and now you've got a big circular grippy thingy right there. So you want to take the sword, extend the handle, and of course knock him over, because why else? You can just clip the sword in like so. And you have the most awkward weapon carrying mode ever. Now, if you extend the club out, it, well, it should balance it a little bit, but it doesn't. But if you go ahead and scooch it up a little bit, like so, it should balance a little. Hey, don't stare at his sword. That's awkward. Hey, his eye is up there. Stop. Stop staring at the sides of his sword. That's just weird. Quit it. So while in the series, he was basically hovering, kind of, basically holding the sword this way. So he just took, you know, puttering along, do to do I think technically he was probably holding one end of it, but it, it's, just, it's really weird. And I would have thought that, like, compact mode would be the best way to display it, but it is what it is. So he's literally like, can't go through any big doors because... Good lord, like just biggest weapon, I think, out of any IBO. I think, uh, extension wise, it's probably the biggest thing. Astroth, what do you think? Yeah, I, I kind of know how you feel. Okay, so let's move on to other accessories real quick. And yeah, because there's only two, uh, you get some spare feet. And these are, of course, the planted feet for when he needs to do anything but hover. So, uh, you just, you know, you've got the little, like, hooves going on down here because bull, or uh, minotaur, more or less. So you pull off the bottom, and you can see that you've got the circular hole with the little tab, and it goes right there on the bottom of the foot. And guys, yeah, this thing will, these will give you much much better stability so honestly i would go with these all the time <laughs> if this guy if, if he's in your collection and he's going to be holding the sword just go ahead and use these feet because it gives him way way better stability for anything and everything not to mention they just look cooler <laughs> so that's just my opinion So let's go ahead and take a look at his articulation, because it's an IBO kit, should have good articulation, and we'll check out some details while we're at it, because, hey, I forgot about that. Alright, so, i uh, got a lot of my favorite dark gray ever, right here on the sides of the horns, though really you can paint the kind of balls that the horns are mounted on, but they would probably scrape, that's the main reason I skipped out on that. Now you do get a standard double poly, or double ball joint poly cap for the neck, so it it does, you know, turkey neck very well. You can turn it, although you have a very, very big, like, space marine 
collar going on there. Now, actually, I've added some little bit of gray bits right back here to the back of the helmet. And, in fact, the entire edge of the collar there and the inside is all painted gray. Now, one thing you guys will notice right off the bat is, hey, this guy's got a blue visor. This does not come with said blue visor. You can actually see some of the glue still on there. That is, in fact, the standard eyes that come with the double O She is Quanta, or She is Quanta, or She is double O Quanta. And because you don't use those eyes, I actually cut them off, sanded off the eye parts, and trimmed everything to fit, and more or less crammed it in there, and then painted the backside with the Molto chrome marker, and then the under uh, underside edge with a little bit of black marker, just so it stands out a little bit. When you're looking at it head on, it's pretty cool. Now, the eye can be revealed. You can literally just flip that up, and he has what is essentially a gray's eye, or the same thing the Valkyries had, because the Valkyrie was more or less the predecessor to the grays. So you can close that down. Now you come down to the shoulders. He's got some nice movement here. Just ball joints. Now the poly cap should move a little bit. However, it doesn't really. So you're getting it mostly from the ball joint itself for the shoulder. You got some nice shoulder armor articulation, just like a Gray's. And you got the extra armor extension that comes off like that, no problem. And then you have the shoulder joint and allows him to pull out like that. And, well, that's in the way, but that's, that's kind of the high teacher you're going to get. Like, way, way out there. You do get your bicep rotation right there. You get your single jointed elbow. Although it should be a double jointed elbow. Hold on. Correction, double jointed elbow, although the way everything bends, you kind of run out of room real quick. Because giant shoulder armor is in the way. Yay. Also, guys, just pointing it out real quick. I use blue panel line marker on the blue bits and gray panel line marker on everything else. Although you could use brown on the mustard color if you really want to. Coming further down the arm, you can see the... Hoses on the arm are painted white. I did that with a spray can, and you can see a little bit of the overspray from masking off everything like that. But these needed to be white, and they don't come in that color, so that was the best way I could do it because painting on hand painting white never works for me. Now, this part right here is in fact a sticker. You can see pretty much the extra sheen on it. Uh, I went ahead and did that because I can't match this mustardy color. And then a little bit of gray right here before the wrist, and then the wrist itself is just a normal. HG kind of wrist, although it is a much larger hand than we've had before. Now we can move on. You have a small gimmick pretty much right here with the chest armor. It can move, and also you can take off and pin it on his face, like extra face armor, I guess? Protecting the head during battle, I guess? I don't know. Oh, I totally forgot. The, uh, the electroshock horns that we never get to see in action. So I guess this is part of the weaponry that it supposedly has, but you can pull it forward and you can have bull mode. Yay. Okay, so he can totally shoot electricity with his horns. Just just, just pretend he can, okay? You got a big sticker right here on the chest. Uh, once again, went ahead and painted that. You do get an ugly crease, stuff like that. You do get exposed top. It is what it is. If you can match this color, by all means, do it. I couldn't. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, so you do get... Torso articulation, get an ab crunch. It's actually very, very stiff for what it is. So you can come way up like that, just like the Grim Gear could. And you can come way down like so. You tilt the horns forward and you can you can have this look. I'm gonna take a picture. Okay, cool. <laughs> also, this part right here on the chest, you have to paint that. It does not come with stickers, does not come with anything, but it's supposed to be a dark color such as black and or gray. You get waist rotation. You can probably go all the way around and make sure I don't hit anything as I go. You do get, whoop, there we go. You do get hips. Yay for individual hips. You don't get any center movement. And we're not going to get a super good Jean-Claude, mostly because of these uh, armor bits right there on the side skirts because you can't go any further because they're hitting the crotch. Um... They're just ball joint mounted, so maybe there's a way you can rotate it out of the way, like so. Nope, that's still in the way. Okay, so there's no way to rotate them out of the way. But hey, you can move them. You do get your thigh rotation. You can go all the way around, but as I always say, why would you? 
you can come forward, but the big fat thighs do sort of get in the way a little bit. You ain't going to go back anywhere because of that butt skirt. You do get a phenomenal double jointed knee, although the entire leg is moving. Come on. There we go. So you can kick himself in the butt. It could go a little bit further, but obviously I'm limited uh, just because of that. But very, very good knee joint. Ooh, you got some dust in there. <sighs> oh, no, that's overspray. My bad. That's a little bit overspray because you get white hoses on the backs of the legs. Done the same way, just did what I could to mask them and literally just hit them with white primer. That is all that is. That is Tamiya Ultra Fine Thin Primer. I think it works just perfectly for this. Mind you, I didn't do a perfect job cleaning up like the, the hose bases wherever they connected. Uh, that was kind of a pain in the butt, and I was running out of time. So I did what I could. I think it looks good for the most part. Now, he does actually have a, a peg back here, but as far as I can tell, they don't give you anything to go there. But I bet... The original Grimgaard uh, rifle could probably plug in there. But there's there's no weapon for that because, you know, the only weapon you guys get is this. So I don't know. Okay, coming down to the ankles. You get a very Graze-like ankle. Actually, it's, eh, it's a little bit more region lace, but hey, you've got a mount here that can go side to side very easily. And then you have a ball joint right below that, which gives you... A lot of tilt in a multitude of directions and then you have the foot itself popping off because it doesn't have any articulation but you can actually get a decent wide stance which considering this guy has to be carrying a giant sword he's gonna need a big wide stance but he's definitely got the minotaur or bull or football player vibe down but it is a good-looking suit. I didn't think I was going to like these colors at first. And mind you, I think animation-wise, it's probably actually a bit more yellow than this. Not quite gold. I see a lot of people actually hit it with some gold. And there's also quite a lot of people who have done a Shovel Knight conversion on this thing that looks really, really cool. And, of course, Dougie used this as his basis for his Samus custom. So actually I need to get another one of these guys along with a Kimaris to actually make a Samus custom of my own, but I am planning on doing that. Also, I forgot to mention this. Paint here, you need some gray paint for this front little thrustery thing. I did a little bit right here just for fun. Same thing right here on the kneecap, a little bit of gray there. Same thing down here, same thing right there. And then also little details here, here, and all along the backpack right along there just to break up the blue also this does pivot which is very very nice gotta love that so big old thrusters everywhere on this guy so he can hover now one thing i'll admit to you guys is i did damage i believe it was this arm so i was taking it apart and you guys can see the, the paint runnage through the crack there so to get this part i built the whole thing and then went back and disassembled and added paint uh, so I had to get this part out, which it just slips in there, but you can't get it out any other way. So disassembling the arm actually broke one of the larger pegs that hold these two pieces together. And you can see a little bit of stressing right in here. That made me sad, but it is what it is. The one thing I did not do is paint the little fake hydraulic pistons there like I normally would. But, you know. It is what it is, guys, and I probably will go back and add a clear coat to this. I just needed to get it done for the review, honestly, because I'm always good at being honest with you guys. Now, this guy does have a couple things we can compare him to. First and foremost being his predecessor or his base form from Season 1, and that is the beautiful Red Bunny of Death. The Grimgaard. So this is, as they say, this actual suit. So I guess because he needed to hide what he had done in Season 1, you know, the whole killing off, <laughs> supposedly, of people, uh, he needed to mas you know, masquerade the suit as something different. So he did. And that's a heck of a change. I mean, w literally, with the exception of the frame, there's hardly any panels shared between these two. Um, even the forearm bits right here with the hoses are different because, I mean, they actually were molded onto a whole different runner. They're very similar. And mind you, I did a copper here and a white here. That's just what I did. 
that's that's just a thing. Uh, the eye inside, I believe, is actually totally different. I think this one was on the uh, B runner, and all of this came off of the C runner. But I mean, for the most part, they're almost exactly the same height. I think. Well, Grimgard's nearly standing straight. If we can get him, the the problem with Grimgard is feet are so tiny, it has a hard time standing because it is a very mobile mobile suit. Uh, well, no, I said it, and then I proved myself wrong. This guy is taller. Of course, he's beefier. And I really do love the uh, twin swords a bit more on this one. But there's not really any getting over this big, ridiculous thing. And it's it's hard to believe that this and this were even the same thing. They're both Valkyries. I kind of wish they hadn't said it was the same suit. I wish they had just said it was another Valkyrie suit. But it is what it is. I guess they needed to come up with a reason why this was no longer around, despite being uh, pretty prevalent in the short amount of time it was on screen. And whenever you build this kit, guys, you end up with leftover little feeties like this, like just the white part. You actually get that and don't use it. So, I mean, it's pretty good. Let's get that out of there. Because that was a McGillis suit, but let's go ahead and look at the other McGillis suit that does go with this guy. And that's one reason why I'm kind of happy to have this, because I can have, like, the Season 2 uh, McGillis club here. No pun intended. So these two, you know, they fought side by side, so in the Hoshmall fight, and you know, the episode leading right up to that, you saw these two together at the air or spaceport and stuff like that. So, they go together. He's a little bit more vibrant, which he was. But I think this one is supposed to be closer to this kind of yellowy-orange. Um, I don't know, honestly. And I'm really considering stealing the sword off my other Grey's Ritter to give to McGillis so he has two like he's supposed to. But, yeah. It's just a good set. So, if you don't have this one, I'm sorry, because then you will never be able to have the complete set. Uh, it, it's just really good. I do dig this. And they'll be displayed together in the in the Season 2 display. Now, one cool thing about it is, you saw it earlier on, but it can, in fact, hold up the weight of the sword. Now, will it be able to forever? I don't know. Sometimes these joints get a little weak with age. But there is something cool you can do if you kind of stretch it just a little bit. No pun intended. So we need to rotate the arms just a little bit. Rotate the wrist over. And, actually, I think I did that slightly wrong. I think the yep, I did. <laughs> this needs to be facing forward, so a little bit of movie magic. And I was facing the right way. But you can dual wield this guy, so you get the hand on top on this side. And you can come over here, and it's a little difficult, but we can do it. Good. It's easier to pull the hands off in some of these cases than rather fight around the weapon and everything. So that one is, yep, like so. You just got to remember you're, you're using the hands backwards. <laughs> it's like because you're, you're placing it from one side, not the other. All right, and then you can just get the armor out of the way because that's actually a problem. Come on, come on, get there, big guy. There we go. Sometimes you got to talk them into it. Why is that not... There we go. So he can, in fact, dual wield the sword. Now, if you really want to, you could probably try to cram both hands on the same handle. I don't think it'll work, though. But he can do this like so. And I think it looks pretty good. It's bending just a little bit. So you got to tweak your angles, figure out the best possible situation for it. Oh, let's get one knee out like so. Be like that. Yeah, look at that. That's a good stance. Take a picture of that guy. <laughs> yeah, look at that. All right, I know there's one thing everybody wants to see. So for everybody who was wondering, yes, a one-armed lupus can hold it, but only by this handle, not this one. The hands are nowhere near big enough, and he's starting to fall. Oh, he didn't fall. But yeah, you, you can sort of recreate that same scene, but you're going to need to remove the arm cannon and stuff like that. So, maybe. I mean, you can't, like, outright stick the sword forward because it just can't bend that way realistically. I mean, if you didn't have to use the thin handle, it could probably do it, but 
I don't know. <laughs> but more or less, you can hold it. And of course, there's your size comparison. Um, I know it's not entirely screen accurate. It is what it is, guys. So, yeah. If you're buying this guy just to recreate this scene, by all means, do it. It'll be fun. It'll be cool. And honestly, because uh, I haven't messed with it in a little while, I kind of forgot how cool Lupus actually is. Still my favorite version of Barbatos, before you guys ask. Uh, Bar Lupus Rex, even though I haven't built it, I do prefer the Lupus itself. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this review. If you like this and you like what I do here, make sure you give me a thumbs up on this video. And subscribe if you're new. This is pretty much what I do every other day with Gunpla and then fun nerdy stuff otherwise. And of course, if you guys are interested in my Patreon, it'll be right here on the screen. John, Andy, Steve, you guys are great. I actually appreciate everything you do. You do help the channel move forward. And yeah, final thoughts though. I do really like this kit. I like the Grim Garrett. I like the Valkyrie. And considering it's so similar to a Graze on the inside, of course I would dig it. Now, like I said, I need to get another one of these guys and another Kimar so I can start making a custom out of them. But if you guys are just trying to get together your IBO Season 2 epic battle, you're going to need one of these. So yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Remember, as always, keep on building.